This month on The Spark, our theme is I've Got Your Back. We'll learn more about one of the first four schools in Memphis to integrate in 1961, which is now listed as a top performing school, an organization enriching the lives of people with intellectual disabilities by meeting their social, recreational, and continued educational needs, and a business dedicated to improving both the quality and quantity of life in our community through exceptional chiropractic care. We'll also share a special moment from our Spark Awards 2018. Just like having relevant and accurate information is necessary to make sound, hiring, and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. DataFax is proud to support the positives and be a sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance is honored to serve the Memphis community for over 60 years. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Additional funding for The Spark is provided by Christian Brothers University, Mueller Industries, YMCA of Memphis and the Mid-South, Meriton, United Way of the Mid-South, My Town Movers, My Town Roofing, My Town Miracles, and by Serves. Ever been excited by a new idea? Inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes making a difference in their own way so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show, which is focused on business and community leaders who are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park, and this is The Spark. They were one of the first four schools to integrate in Memphis in 1961, and now they're one of the top performing schools. We're here with the principal of Bruce Elementary, Archie Moss Jr. Archie, give us a little bit of a history lesson for the, the legacy of Bruce Elementary. Well, you did a really good job of just laying the foundation for it. So as mentioned, we're one of the four schools alongside Gordon Elementary, Springdale, Rosdale. We were one of those four to integrate on October 3rd, 1961. So it actually will be coming up really soon. Um, and we had actually 13 brave first graders who integrated Memphis City Schools at the time. And so we actually had three of those scholars who integrated Bruce that we always want to represent, always recognize. That's Dwayne Cows, Harry Williams, and Menelik Fomby. And so we always say that we can be proud Bruce Bulldogs because of the legacy that they left for us long time ago. So we're really excited about the legacy of Bruce and continuing the tradition of making sure that we are one of the top schools in the state of Tennessee. Well, and I like the fact that you point out that that's a school that you as the leader now, you wouldn't have been able to attend back then. Absolutely, and I think that's something I always share with individuals. <laughs> like, I am the leader of a school that wasn't designed for me. So I think it's so impactful at the opportunity that we have to be able to continue to transform the lives of different scholars who look very different from the scholars in which um, then the school was before 1961. And so I think it's important for us to continue that legacy, continue pushing the rigorous instruction to make sure that all the students, regardless of what backgrounds they come from, are prepared to go to the next level. So talk about today where you stand because now you are recognized as one of the top performing schools. Absolutely, I think it's important to focus on the culture of a building and the culture of a school community and making sure that everyone understands that this school is a community school for everyone to be a part of. And so I think it was important for me and my staff at Bruce to make sure that we were implementing different initiatives to make sure parents felt like they were welcome, to make sure students felt like they could see themselves in the activities and in the events that we were um, putting on and putting together and so I think making sure that we recognize our scholars each month with our community meetings making sure that we invite people from the outside to come in and just witness the greatness that we see making sure that we have different extracurricular activities for our scholars to participate in I you talked about the basketball league like that's something that was out of the box non-conventional but something I wanted to be able to create to provide different outlets for our scholars after school to make sure they have something to focus on work toward and be able to build on and so I think just being able to be non-conventional I always tell people I'm a non, I was a non-conventional teacher. And I think I'm the same way as a principal now where I'm making sure that if this is what everyone else is doing, I'm going to go outside that box to figure, okay, what else can I do different to make sure I'm reaching my students and getting them what they need. Hey, you do whatever it takes, putting the students first. So, so carry that forward because you're a New Leaders alum and you got together with other New Leaders and New Leaders is a, uh, an organization that trains principals and teachers and, and, and really equips them for success. But you got together and you created this basketball league and yes. it's blossomed. It's completely blossomed um, from when it started. Again, myself and three other New Leader alums, we didn't even create, it wasn't even a league at the time, it was just 
I wanted to get something for my kids. They wanted to get something for their students. And so we just started playing each other just nonstop. Um, and we had little pseudo playoffs, wasn't anything big. But from there, the word just got around Memphis and Shelby County Schools about how do I get a part of this league? I want, I want my school to participate. And it just continued to grow from nine schools to 14 schools to 26 schools to now we're getting ready to launch our fall league. And I'm just looking forward to even impacting even more scholars. We just finished the, the spring league had about uh, 300 scholars that participate. And I think about 26 schools, 300 scholars across Memphis that were being impacted by this basketball league. There was just this one simple idea. So I'm really excited about being able to continue to expand, continue to impact even more scholars across Chevy County Schools, across Memphis, so we can make sure students have healthy outlets outside of school to keep them focused, to keep them motivated, to keep them um, making sure they have their academics at the top priority. And you're doing all this as a volunteer. So uh, yes. talk about, though, using social media to read to your students at night. I think that's another game changer for what you're doing. Absolutely. So I think that was an awesome idea that my librarian came up with. We've been really working trying to increase literacy across our building. We've seen drastic changes and drastic growth in relation to math and science instruction and as it relates to their ability to showcase mastery on the 10 ready assessment. And we saw a lot of growth in reading, but it wasn't as drastic as it was in math and science. And so we're trying to figure out different non-conventional ways. What can we do to engage our scholars in wanting to read? So my librarian came up with this clever idea of how about you read to them um, bedtime stories um, at night? And at first I was a little skeptical because I was like, is anyone gonna actually tune in? I don't wanna read to myself. And the first week we actually launched in February, the first week I uh, remember waiting around trying to figure out, okay, is anyone gonna log on? And when I went on the camera and I saw that I had 40 people on, on already, and I was like, oh, all right, people do wanna watch. And so since then we've just continued to do it. So every Tuesday night um, I'm reading different bedtime stories to my scholars. And the stories that I choose are stories that I want my scholars to be able to see themselves in. And so again, we allow the scholars to now choose. Each week they get two stories they can choose from. And, and again, that's just, again, a non-conventional way uh, to get our scholars as well as our parents involved in reading. And again, I know my parents might be busy. They might have just got off work. They might not have the opportunity to read to their child every night. And so I always tell them Tuesday nights, you could take your hat off. You could put your feet up because Principal Moss has you. I'm going to make sure I read to your scholars so that hopefully, even though 730 is pretty early, they can still go to bed and get ready to go to school the next day. And so it's just been a great initiative that each week we've had visitors that have uh, tuned in from the UK, from wow. Germany. We've had different community members that have sent us books to read, to feature in our bedtime story. So this, again, small idea has continued to grow and continue to blossom as time has gone on. So where I know you're on social media, obviously, but uh, yes. where do we go to follow you and your efforts in Bruce Elementary? Yes. Yeah, so if you want to join in on our bedtime stories, we do our Facebook live stream every Tuesday, 730 Central Time from our Bruce Elementary School Facebook page. But also you continue to follow me on um, on Instagram at Principal Moss Jr. Um, as well as on Twitter. And then our Bruce account is on Twitter and on um, Instagram is at Bruce Bulldog. So feel free to tune in, find out all the great things. We call ourselves the Hidden Gym in Midtown. I don't think we're hitting that much because I think we're really making a name for ourselves and really just trying to do great work for the kids of Memphis City. Well, Archie, I love everything you're doing. Greatly appreciate you coming on the show. Thank no you. Problem. Thank you. They're an organization enriching the lives of people with intellectual disabilities. I'm here with Joanne Fusco. She is the executive director. Um, Joanne, let, let's start. Give us a little background on the Exceptional Foundation in terms of the work that we all know and love, and, and then we'll talk about kind of the, the amazing future ahead. But uh, give us a little bit of history lesson. Yeah, we're so excited um, to have new branding, but nothing's changed. We're still a day facility for individuals with special needs, intellectual disability intellectual disabilities where um, the ages are 10 to whatever. Um, we don't turn anyone down. We have a lot of low income individuals and we have a place for them to come and be safe and have fun and be with friends. Nobody makes fun of them. There's no bullying, um, just a safe, fun environment. We go on field trips, we do art, we do music, we've had gardening before. Now we have some um, tomatoes and herbs in some pots and plant, plants, uh, flowers, we cook, 
we do music, we do everything that you and I like to do, and we open the doors for anyone with special needs. Walk us through what a typical day is like, because obviously, as you mentioned, everybody, um, it, it's customizable, it's fun, it's fellowship, but there's a lot of activities as well. Yes, so we open from eight to six, Monday through Thursday, and around eight o'clock, parents drop off, or caregivers, we have a few that are living with caregivers. They're on their way to work, they don't have anywhere to go. Um, the day begins around nine o'clock, 8.30 to 9.30, we're in the gym playing basketball, some free time, having fun. We have a walking club that walks around the gym. Uh, 10 o'clock, 9.45, we start cleaning up, washing hands, going to the bathroom, and then we're out in the city in our vans. We go to places like Graceland, or we go downtown for lunch, or we go to the museum, the Dixon, we have art classes there, or learn about their garden. Uh, we go bowling. We, I, I can't yeah, think fun. of anything that we don't do. In the summer, we have a summer program, we swim. We have messy day with whipped cream and egg walks and throwing eggs at the uh, staff, which they love to do. So uh, we have a lot of volunteers that come from St. Mary's, White Station, Ridgeway, Hutchison, MUS, and the, I call them my kids because I'm the oldest one there, but they hang out, they like to do their nails, they like to look at magazines, they like to talk about what they're doing on the weekend. It's just, like I said, a safe, fun environment. Well, you're building amazing relationships. I mean, not only with each other, but obviously with all the volunteers in the community. And so you're breaking down the stereotypes, you're building relationships, you're bringing our city together. You've got it, it's wonderful. We, speaking of relationships, so we have a wonderful relationship with St. Mary's. They put on a fashion show for us. Um, Steinmark provides the clothes and our participants are the models and really they don't want to get off the stage. It's the first time they've probably been honored. They're smiling, they're waving, people are clapping. It's really, you'll have to come next year. It's an amazing event and St. Mary's does all the work so that's wonderful. Um, we also have our chili cook-off in the fall which is coming up November at Overton Square and where it's not too late to sign up for a team. You cook, we have local judges, maybe you'll be one of our judges next year, and we have winners, um, nobody's a loser. We have um, music, Susan Marshall, um, along with um, her bands, uh, Patrick Fusco, my son, is a keyboard, Sam Shoup from the University of Memphis, Joe Restivo, they um, get the crowd going, and Overton Square has been a wonderful location for us. People are walking through. Yeah. Um, our Pride Group, which is our job readiness group, um, sells hot dogs and soft drinks, and so they're learning about money, and they learn to do a lot of things. Well, we carry that forward, too. We'll talk more about Pride, because yes. this is a big deal. Pride is a fabulous group. We have 10 uh, of our high-functioning individuals in it. They're learning job skills. We're not getting them jobs. We um, visit West Cancer Center where we greet people, greet um, some of their patients. Um, we work in their coffee shop and we help do whatever they need us to do. If it's getting the wristbands done, if it's handing out Valentine gifts, um, whatever they need, and we love going there. We also help at Southern Rains, which is the equine facility for special needs, and we get ready for their day. We, they don't even tell us what to do anymore. We go in there, we know what to do. So we help clean up the stalls, we help clean the boots, the um, saddles, whatever it needs to be done, we do it. And we got volunteer of the year there, so, awesome. which is awesome. And then we go to Plato's Closet, where again, we've been going there for over a year, and we know what to do now. We sort the clothes, we do it in sizes, we fold what needs to be fold, the little security tabs we help put on, and um, so we- We're Just giving them real world yes. application experiences and oh. confidence that yes. goes with it too. Yes, and they do. It's a real, like you said, confidence builder. And then on Thursdays, 
they miss out on all the field trips, so that's their day to either go bowling or go out to lunch or help out. We do give back to the community. We um, deliver meals for Temple Israel on the Jewish holidays. We've done work at MIFA and helped with bagging of foods and boxing. So um, because we're a nonprofit organization, we are teaching our participants how to give back also. Love it. And then talk about the dog treats and the good yeah, stuff for the holidays. So, um, well, I started at the Exceptional Foundation because I do pet therapy with my Golden Retrievers. And I was doing a reading program there and they kept saying, we need an executive director. So that was eight years ago. I said, I'll help you get started. I'll do some fundraising for you. But anyway, um, you can't go there and not be happy. We do um, dog treats that we sell um, in local stores. It's a really big item at Christmas for um, your buying presents for your loved ones. Well, you know, our pets are our loved ones too. So um, Oak Hall, Joseph's, um, Novel, Bookstore, we're all around town, you can find us. And if you need some, we have them at our location too. So talk about the location yeah. where we can drop in and, and come say hi. Yeah, you don't even have to call, but if you want to, 901-387-5002. And we are on the corner of Quince and Estate. Our entrance is actually on Estate. It used to be Cherokee Baptist Church. It's now Redeemer. And um, we're right next to the gym and we have use of the gym. So if you want to play basketball, we're in there from 1.30 to 3.30. Come visit us. Nice. Well, Joanne, thank you for all you do for coming thank on the show. You. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. The Spark Awards annually recognize and celebrate individuals and organizations that have made outstanding contributions to the community. This year's recipient of the Education Teacher Award is Thomas Denson of Cherokee Elementary. I am a pre-K teacher at Cherokee Elementary School. Cherokee is an I-Zone school that is based with, within Orange Mound and we are this close to being out of the bottom 5%. When I graduated my bachelor's degree in art uh, and graphic design. The market at the time just seemed to be too overwhelming. It was a job loss after job loss. And then what I decided to do initially was to get a master's degree in art in order to teach college. So what I did then was I said, well, let me go ahead and teach high school and start there. So I got my first job at Fraser High School. So then I went and I was a special education assistant for a little while and then I moved to pre-K. And this is my fourth year in pre-K right now. You recently wrote an essay that has been able to now be awarded $100,000 to build a fitness center. So talk about that and how huge that is for your school. I think the district sent out an email one day and the principal said, let's get this. There was a lot of paperwork involved. There was a lot of writing, a lot of just detailing the school as a whole. It took a lot of effort and a lot of pretty much weeks to really compile what I wanted to say about my community and the school. So I think out of 600 applications out of the state of Tennessee alone, we, they picked three and Cherokee was able to be one of the three based on that essay. So I guess that essay, that essay had an impact on what they wanted to see within you know, a teacher and school and just the community. And so $100,000 fitness center, what, paint that picture of what, what you're getting. Right now within our school, we really don't have an outlet. So what we wanted to do was say, hey, if we can get a fitness center in here, for one, we're fighting childhood obesity. Two, we have an outlet for our students. They want to come to school. They're motivated because we just made PE way more fun. Now, tell me about your son. Uh, I think it was about two years ago, uh, there was a little boy in Texas and he was eight years old and he had autism and reading his story and just really, I knew I wanted him. And I mean, that's really all I could say about that. And they finally brought him to me in November of last year and he was adopted in May this year. So I am now a single dad of a student with special needs and we're fighting hard at his school. If you're proud of the school that you work at and you're proud of the community that you work at, I'm gonna be honest, I love waking up and going to work every day. Every single morning now, I'm able to wake up and go to work and be completely happy. When I get home, my son gets off the bus, he runs, he tells me about his day. Helping him and seeing uh, 
seeing not only him excel, just seeing my students excel, seeing them reading on a first grade level after they leave pre-K, that's really what just puts a smile on my face every single day. They're dedicated to improving the quality and the quantity of life in our community with exceptional chiropractic care. I'm here with the founder, the president, the owner of Mid-South Chiropractic, Dr. Brittany Kasprak. And let's start, your story um, starts with, with horseback riding, having an accident, and then realizing how important chiropractic care is, and that creates your passion. So share a little bit of that story. Yeah, growing up I rode horses and it was one fall too many uh, before I was bouncing back as quickly as I should have been. Uh, growing up, my mom always went to a chiropractor. We didn't know that that was something that children could do as well. And eventually she said, well, why don't we try taking you to the chiropractor? And I said, okay, you know, whatever, because at this point I wasn't able to ride. I wasn't able to do the things I wanted to do. Uh, and I was 11 at this point and went, got my first adjustment and my life had been forever changed. I was back riding, doing the things I needed to be doing and you know, really wishing that I had done it sooner. It was something that my family had implemented prior to that. And uh, from there, the rest is history. Went on and, and began studying chiropractic and fell in love with it even more. And so now you've got three locations, DeSoto yes. County. So talk about Mid-South Chiropractic. Sure, so in 2015, we started an Olive Branch. Uh, that clinic has, has really taken off, but we realized quickly we couldn't serve everybody in just that one location, so we then moved into Hernando, uh, and then quickly followed with a Horn Lake location, uh, and continuing to grow. You know, we've got a, a strong team of doctors uh, and specialists that really specialize in making sure your care is catered to you, and as we continue to grow and see changes in our community, we're gonna keep striving for that next step. Give us maybe one or two tips in terms of taking care of our back. I mean, obviously for heavy lifting, and you know, what, what, are, what are some of your top favorite tips to give people? Favorite tips are the favorite reasons why people come in, typically. Uh, you know, one of the things that we see very frequently is people bending and lifting things. Uh, so one of my favorite things to tell my patients is make sure if you're bending, you're doing it with a neutral spine. So that means bending from your knees and hips, not utilizing your spine to bend forward to pick things up. Typically we see injuries as people are bending and then rotating their spine. Uh, so that's one of my favorite tips. Next favorite tip is uh, a big one that we've been pushing lately and that is that uh, sitting is the new smoking. You know, people sitting all day long, it's detrimental to the spine, it's detrimental to mobility and we really are, are campaigning to get our patients up and moving. Now we know people have to work, but we're encouraging them to set an alarm on their phone or whatever it is every 30 minutes to get up, move, and then get back to work. Nice. Switch over and talk about being involved in the community. You yourself heavily involved in horses and horse shows yeah. and things like mm -hmm. that. So talk about kind of the community side for you personally and also for Mid-South Chiropractic. So we're trying to campaign to give back. We wanna constantly be in a, a servant mindset. So whether that be giving back to our patients within the clinic or giving back to local charities. We do a lot with the YMCA and campaigning to, to gain mobility, uh, which is also one of their main core values, uh, giving people the ability to move and, and do the things they wanna achieve in life. But as we're, we're working throughout the community, we're really just trying to educate people, which is our greatest asset to them. Talk about the horses, because I think this is a neat side that you're still involved in. Yes, so. yes. So I do still uh, ride and compete with uh, horses. I do hunter jumpers. So uh, most people think I'm crazy, but nonetheless, it is. Uh, it's a great sport and uh, a lifetime sport. So it's truly a uh, a big portion of my life. Um, but it also is one of the main things that keeps me going in chiropractic because I see so much of how that function uh, communicates with another animal. It's just amazing to see. Talk about on your end, um, you know, the benefit of, you mentioned youth, of, of being involved and in taking care of your body early on, obviously, as well as later in life too. Absolutely, most people don't realize the first trauma to our spine is childbirth. Um, if you've ever watched the process or uh, YouTube the process, it is not a very spine friendly to the infant process. And so what happens is sometimes we're born with some of these imbalances. And those are things that we can work as chiropractors to correct early on. Uh, in our clinic, we always say we see them from three days all the way to 130, you know, 130 years old. Uh, so, you know, getting the spines of the infants checked, it's absolutely crucial to their proper mobility. It is so much easier to be preventative than it is to correct sick adults. You yeah. know, it's easy to prevent 
uh, things from happening in young children versus going and correcting them in adults. So where do we go to learn more about Mid-South Chiropractic and to, to see all the conversations online and so forth? Absolutely, yeah, there's a lot out there. Uh, MidSouthChiropractic.com is our website. There you'll be able to find information about our doctors and our clinics. Um, our Facebook page is uh, Mid-South Chiropractic. Lots of activity on there. We always have fun things going on and, and ways to get involved. Dr. Brittany, thank you for all you do for coming on the show. Thank Greatly you. appreciate it. Thank you. One of the keys to success is having a strong support network, having people in your life who love and encourage you, who you can talk to, spend time with, and get help from, who say, I've got your back, can make all the difference in the world in our ability to be happy and healthy, achieve success, and feel fulfilled. In our schools, we have teachers and principals like Archie Moss Jr. at Bruce Elementary who are creating a culture of excellence for their students and helping them achieve success by not just focusing on the academics, but relationships and going out of their way to do things like read to students at night using social media and create basketball leagues to keep them on a path of positivity. We also have organizations that are making sure no one is left out by saying, I've got your back to those with intellectual disabilities so they can stand out and be exceptional living life to the fullest. And businesses like Mid-South Chiropractic literally have our back by making sure that we're able to perform at our highest levels and enjoy a healthy, pain-free, active lifestyle, all while giving back to make our community stronger. We all win when we have someone who can say, I've got your back. Thank you for watching The Spark. To learn more about each of the guests, to watch past episodes, and to share your stories of others leading by example, visit WKNO.org and click on the link for The Spark. We look forward to seeing you next month, and we hope that you'll continue joining with us to create a spark for the Mid-South. Just like having relevant and accurate information is necessary to make sound, hiring, and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance is honored to serve the Memphis community for over 60 years. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark.